Aloha, my name is Casey Morton. I'm a professional boxer and um, recent WBO Asia Pacific champion. Two, three. Yeah, two, three. What was life like in Hawaii? Um, so I, I grew up in Hawaii. It was it was a little tough growing up. Um, it had a very negative upbringing, um, back and forth through foster homes, group homes, detention homes. You know, in that um, type of that type of path. Um, I, I was constantly having to defend myself. I was constantly in street fights. Um, so it, it it was it was rough growing up. Did you know what you wanted to be when you were a kid? What was your passion like? I did, um, I kind of even as an at-risk teen, I knew that my heart and my calling in life was was to support and help that population. Um, so I, I did get another chance at life and um, prior to boxing, I went back to school, I landed work in, in that field that I'm still very passionate about, um, but there was still something um, missing you know, internally, there was still an emptiness present. Um, so through boxing, um, it's taught me how to put myself first um, so that I'm able to help people from all walks of life. Um, so I still am very passionate about supporting that population. And um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty fascinating how life evolves. What was uh, the fighting culture like in Hawaii? Was there a big boxing culture or fighting culture? And how did you fall into that? Fighting is kind of a big part of our culture in Hawaii. Um, you lose a fight, don't go home until you win, <laughs> you know? Or it's, it's it's kind of a part of, a, a big part of our upbringing, you know? And, um, it could be group against group, and it's like, okay, one-on-one. -on -one. And um, so I, I kind of adapted to that young, at a young age, you know, early on. When did you first start having that interest in fighting? When was that first passion and first, uh, you know, encounter with that love of fighting? I always kind of had it, so to speak. You know, I, um, I constantly am asked now, like, how are you such a nice person, but a monster in the ring? It's like, well, I always felt like I was a nice person. I just could never be that person given the way I grew up. You know, so now that I have an outlet to channel all that, you know, anger and, you know, like dark feelings and um, emotions, and I can leave the gym and be a nice person, <laughs> you know? And what was the transition like moving from Hawaii to California? Either, you know, culture shock, boxing wise, life wise, everything. What was the transition like? It was, um, it was pretty drastic. I um, actually moved to Florida first. I um, had gotten another chance out of my negative, I gotten a chance out of the negative lifestyle that I had created, that I'd kind of adapted to. Um, and I had an opening and I took it. I got a one-way ticket to Florida. I had the clothes on my back <laughs> and a backpack full of journals and, you know, pictures. And I, I was so grateful to have another chance at life. People thought I was crazy. You know, I got dead end jobs, you know, and um, I'd come to work just so full of life and happy. And people are like, are you nuts? You know what I mean? This is a dead end job. What is it? Are you crazy? You know, and I was just so grateful. I just kind of realized I don't really like Florida. I don't think it's for me. So I thought, how hard could it be? You know, I picked up a road map. I'm like, okay, I just follow this line to that line easy you know so like weeks and weeks i bought a truck and weeks and weeks and weeks of driving and crying and screaming like i just want to get to california you know i accidentally um and i'm from hawaii we don't know about or at least i didn't know about like the difference between like cities i didn't even know about zip codes or area codes you know until i moved out here and um so i i, I was thinking you know i'm gonna end up in la and i by by accident, you know, ended up in San Francisco and I was so enamored, right, by everything about the city. I just never left and I entered the field of um, crisis counseling, youth outreach and um, eventually segued into boxing. Mm -hmm. Thank God I accidentally made it here. Awesome. How did you fall into boxing specifically? 
Um, like I expressed earlier, there was a emptiness present. You know, I was giving and giving and giving and giving, and it was so spread thin. And it was just a matter of time before I thought, you know, this is it. This is life. Let's go backwards. <laughs> you know, but I, I refused to give in. And um, I thought, okay, I need an outlet. I need some sort of outlet. So with combat sports, it's a team effort, but I'm solely responsible for the outcome. So I love that about it. Um, and I grew up fighting, so I thought, that's for me, let me try that. You know, and uh, my very first experience, I walked into a gym and my very first experience of boxing, I, um, I just fell head over heels in love with it. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I was meant to be here. You know, like I was meant to do something great through this sport, and um, that was the start. So when you started boxing, what did your friends and family think of you, like, pursuing this dream? I Well, I guess my surroundings, like my peers um, at the jobs that I had, they thought it was crazy. That's when your dream becomes your reality. That's when life begins, and people who were meant to be in your life, they either never left or they kind of gravitate back to you you know like hey you know I'm sorry about teasing you I'm sorry about disowning you um I had no idea now you inspire me I'm, I want to go off and become right a superstar too you know whatever it is and um, it's the power of the ripple effect by default right I fell so in love with and I, it just it became an obsession overnight you know something interfered with training gone you know if a job gave me an ultimatum you know what well thank you for that you know good luck to you in this organization I choose boxing you know and what were some of those obstacles that you had to overcome and that you have overcome to be where you are now a lot um definitely comes with the territory like being female um like when I first started people thought I was a joke you know like I I wanted this so badly um just off top I I I decided I'm gonna be a world champion and you know, I'm gonna be a professional world champion people thought I was like this chick's crazy you know what I mean and I did everything and anything I could I begged to fight every day I had my first fight after two and a half months of training and I was just so eager to get in there and I hadn't stopped you know for about um, I think seven eight years in my career I, I didn't have a coach I didn't have proper coaching so I had the belief that the right coach would come and I'm going to be ready when he or she does, as opposed to like, okay, let me look for a coach first and then work hard. I had the opposite, like, no, they're going to come and I'm going to be ready when they come. So I would go to tournaments by myself. I went to about 13 national and international tournaments by myself um, just to get the experience. I, I just did whatever it took to gain the proper experience. So I, I didn't let any obstacle kind of interrupt um, what my vision was or getting to my vision. and. Um, you know, like time went by and I seemed less and less crazy as things started kind of coming to life. How do you keep motivated and focused when you're feeling defeated down or you don't have, you know, a fight lined up? How do you keep that motivation locked in? I, I treat it as um, my job. Like I, I want this dream more than I want to breathe. You know, it means it means so much to me that um, I will never, like I've not missed a single sit up or push up or run since the moment I started. So um, I'm not the one to tell your excuses to because no matter what, um, I will always get the work done. So what does the future of your boxing career look like now? Being world champion, what's your next goal? What's your next fight? And now it's, um, forgive me if I tear up, but it's a little emotional. Um, it's like I knew that getting this title meant everything and beyond in boxing you know like um, speaking about nerves you know I was just a nervous wreck um, building up to this fight um, going into this fight through every round of each fight um, because what it meant to me it, it meant a milestone you know it was a mile an internal milestone for me you know and then in my head of course you know in my head I just psyched myself out like um, everything was for nothing if you don't win you know you have to go through this and you have to do this and um, this meant everything to me so it's like I'm in the dark I have no options one night I blink and overnight we have options so it is pretty surreal you know and emotional to kind of um 
do news segments and to do interviews and to talk about um, the options that I now have. Um, so there are three legitimate um, bodies of organizations in boxing. Um, there's a WBO, WBC, WBA, um, and then we have all the smaller um, titles under that. Um, so now we're gonna go after all three. Like you're not supposed to know the answers. You're not supposed, it's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to be scary and cold and, you know, like the the, um, the fear of the unknown, it's supposed to be uncomfortable, but drastic change and great things can only come from that. And the more you continue to practice that it and make it habit, right, the more amazing your life continues to become. But you only, you only, um, you only figure that out for yourself as you're moving forward. So I, I empower everyone. I, I, I tell people from all walks of life, people all ages, jump, do do, and go after whatever it is that will make you happy, that gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling inside when you think about it, that makes you feel like a kid again, or whatever it is, go after it. Reporting from Scott Center News, I'm Brianna McDonald. And Casey Morton. Thanks for watching. Bye, we hope to see you soon.